For the next step, we have the following two rules for manipulating derivatives. First, we take a function, multiply by a constant, and then take the derivative. Same as if we took the derivative of the function and then multiply by the constant. So we're allowed to pull constants out of derivatives. Then, if I take a sum or difference of functions, apply the derivative. It's the same as if we took the derivatives and then took the sum or difference. Now, with these two rules and the power rule, we're able to take the derivative of any polynomial. So, for example, let's take f of x equal to 6x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus 2. Our first rule says we could just pull the 6 to the side and then we apply the power rule to x cubed. So we get 3x squared. For the 2x squared, we set the 2 aside. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Then for minus x, just recall, we turn the x into a 1 and then constants go to 0. So we collect everything, we get for the derivative, 18x squared plus 4x minus 1. For another example, okay, let's try f of x equal to x squared minus 2x times x squared minus 1 over 2x. Now, with the rules we have so far, we don't know how to address a quotient. So if this is showing up in this section, that means we probably need to simplify our problem before we can apply derivatives. So let's take a look. Well, you'll notice in this first factor, we can factor an x out, and that's gonna cancel with the x in the denominator. So if we expand out the top, okay, we get this polynomial here, we're dividing by two, and then when we put the two with each term, we wind up with this polynomial here. Okay, rules from before apply. So I'm just going to apply derivatives to each term. Then we'll just pull each constant out. So I pull out the 1 half, derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Pull out the minus sign, derivative of x squared is 2x. The minus 1 half x, just remember the x goes to a 1. And then the constant term 1 is going to go to 0. We collect everything, and then we're left with 3 halves x squared minus 2x minus a half for our final answer. Now, you may have noticed that our rules look similar to rules that we have for limits. That's no accident, so let's take a look at the proofs and see where the limits come in. Now, we take our function f, multiply by a constant c, take the derivative, evaluate it at x. We write out the definition of derivative as a limit. So take our function, evaluate it at x plus h, take our function, evaluate it at x, Take the difference, divide by h, then take the limit as h goes to 0. In the numerator, I could pull the c out, okay, and we know that's just a number, so it can go out in front of the limit. Now, what's left over is just a definition of the derivative of f evaluated at x. So that gives us our first result. For the second result, okay, first let's just consider the sum. So we'll take f plus g, take the derivative, evaluate it at x. We write out the definition of derivative in this case. Then we're just going to split up the f and the g. So we're not going to split the x plus h. And when we rearrange terms, okay, we're going to have two quotients. Now, if each of these limits exists separately, then I could write this as a sum of two limits. And these are just going to be the definitions for derivative of f, derivative of g. So again, we have our result. Now, that leaves the result for the difference. Clever way to get that is just to let your g be equal to minus g. And then we can apply our first rule. So here I'll let c be equal to minus 1, which is a perfectly good constant. 